okay? Now, the angle in the alternate segment is often quite hard to spot. It's quite hard to spot. So this time, I want you to just redraw this diagram again. Redraw the diagram again. Maybe draw it a little smaller. Draw a tangent, any tangent, like that. And the way you can do this is draw actually a triangle inside the circle, a triangle that touches um, all the points on the circumference, so long as it touches the point of contact as well. Any triangle you like. Okay, so I'm going to draw this one. Bless you. There we go. Now, you might have noticed, the astute among you might have noticed that there are actually two angles in the alternate segment, depending on which side you're looking at. Okay, so let me come back to my colors. This time I'll do it the same. Let's have a look at this one. Here, have a look at this guy. There's an angle between the tangent and the chord of contact. You see that? I better put some names on this now. So this is taking the D suggestion. Let's call this point T for tangent. So the tangent. Let's call this P and Q because they're on the circle. Have I got them all? I think so. No, I need to do the ends. Let's call this M, N. Okay, so I just labeled in orange angle MTP. MTP. What's the angle in the alternate segment? What's its name? Hmm, I think I, think I heard it. Um, angle PQT is probably the way I'd say alphabetical as much as possible. PQT. That's the angle in the alternate segment. Do you see it? Can you actually see how it's like, okay, look at, look at the two segments that have been created here. There's this one in the small segment and there's this one in the big segment. You see that? But there's another angle in the alternate segment because your tangent has two chords of contact. Two of them. Let me get my green now. See this guy over here? Let me put a big fat green dot. There you go. There's another angle between the tangent. It's just a different chord of contact. So what is the angle in the alternate segment for this guy? It's TPQ, isn't it? Over there. Okay. So it's a bit trippy because it looks sort of weird. Um, <laughs> years and years ago, like even before I was, um, I was at school, if you draw a diagram for this property that looks like this, or something like this, and you draw it upright, it sort of looks like, I don't know if anyone's seen like those, it, it's like a surfboard, but it's got a sail on it, and they sort of like, they, you know. So people called this, they actually called this the windsurfer theorem. Please don't write the windsurfer <laughs> theorem, but that's what they actually called it, uh, because that's kind of what it looks like. Not a good idea, because like 95% of the time, it actually doesn't look anything like a windsurfer. You're like, what is that guy? He's like windsurfing on the moon or something. Anyway, so the key though, is if you've got the tangent and the chord of contact, look carefully for where the two segments are. Generally speaking, there's a big one and there's a small one. Um, but you can do it any way you like and you still get the same property. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're now up to, if you have a look on your sheet now, um, we've actually done up to 11. We've done up to 11 and we've also done 15. Let's talk through them because you've had some time. Number one, we should be able to all do number one. Number one. I'll give you a tip. It starts with equal. Sorry, I shouldn't steal yours. I should steal. Has everyone taken one? Are we all here? Equal chords. Is that a spare? Oh, good. Equal chords. Subtend or form or make. Equal angles at the... Now, you might be tempted to say circumference. You might be tempted to say circumference. However, I want to point out to you, you have to be very careful. For example, here's a chord. Here's a chord. Let's call these guys equal. Okay? So, when you think about angles at the circumference, you might say, oh, an angle over here. But have a look at the other equal chord. You can make a lot of angles off that chord. In fact, you can make an infinite number of angles. Have a look at this guy. Are those going to be equal? So these are not going to be equal. They're emphatically not going to be equal. Um, because what I've done is I've sort of gone in the wrong segment. Okay, And um, this makes it very awkward to say. So a better way to say it, or a more appropriate way because it's actually correct, is that they're not equal angles in the circumference. They're equal angles at the 
center. Because if you're at the center, there's only one center. You can't get that side wrong for the chord, okay? So this guy here, that one there, has to be equal to that one there, no matter where you position those chords, so long as they're equal length. We're gonna keep on talking about equal chords. So number two, equal chords are? They're equidistant from the center. Sorry that the lines are a little bit too small to fit. I was trying to cram it all in one page, which I successfully did, but then you have to write really small. Sorry about that. Um, now the last one's a bit tricky. The last one's a bit tricky because it uses a word that you're familiar with, but not in a way that you're familiar with. So when you have something, a line, that's perpendicular to something else, okay? You actually can call that line a perpendicular. That's a bit awkward. Perpendicular is usually an adjective but you can use it as a noun, okay? So property three is the perpendicular from the center, right? So let's, let's work out what this looks like. Here's my chord, because this is a chord property, right? Here's my center, and here is my perpendicular from the center. That's what I just drew, this guy. That's the perpendicular. What, what is it? The perpendicular from, from, the bisec from the center to a chord bisects the chord. It, it chops it in half, like so. Now, just before we leave off this one and move on to the angles, <coughs> I hope you remember that property number three, you can say it in at least two other ways. You can say it in at least two other ways. For instance, you could say um, so. the bisector of a chord passes through the center. Does that make sense? The bisector from a chord, uh, that's perpendicular, sorry, the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center. Or alternatively, you could say, um, the bisector to the center is perpendicular to the chord. So it's all the same property, but you just, depending on what information you've been supplied, you just say it from a different angle. Um, so have a look at four, five, six, seven, and eight. The angle at the, we just used this one in the proof. Angle at the, here it is, center, right, is twice the angle at the circumference on the same arc. So we use that one. Property five, we haven't used this one, but it's very easy. Yeah, if you've got a diameter like that, you've created um, an angle in a semicircle like that, right? Oh, by the way, uh, I didn't point this out before because I forgot, but this is a lovely application of this guy here, right? Think about this. Look at my semicircle. Look at my semicircle. This is an angle at the circumference standing on this arc over here. Do you agree? That's the arc. What's the angle at the center that's standing on the same arc? It's 180 degrees, it's a straight angle. Uh, there he is, right there. And again, the angle at the center is twice. It's just really nice to see those together. Um, that was five, angles, sorry, property six, property six, angles, standing, standing. Oh, sorry, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Um, number six, angles standing on the same arc are equal. Uh, and an alternative waiting for that, but the same property, is that angles in the same segment are equal. Uh, the cyclic chord ones are quite easy to remember, generally speaking. Which angles are we talking about? In a cyclic chord, we're interested in the opposite angles, right? Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, not equal, supplementary. supplementary. Very good. Um, directly following on from that, you can say that the one on the outside, the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral, is equal to the opposite interior angle. Okay, very good. <clears throat> um, tangents, we did these fairly recently. A tangent is, we use this one. A tangent is perpendicular to the, what's it perpendicular to? It's perpendicular to the radius drawn from its point of contact or at its point of contact. Um, and then we just did 10. The angle between a tangent, you don't need that line, <clears throat> and the chord of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Um, 11, uh, my order's a bit funny. Um, 11 we did last week, at the end of the week. Again, it's at tangents. Tangents from an extended point are equal. Right? Uh, and the last one I think that we already have covered is 15. 15. Um, when you've got touching circles, right? Touching circles, they just, they have that common tangent. You can say that they're, curly news how we finish, how do we start? The, well it's the center property, right? So the centers and the point of contact of those circles, that's their curly